Um, I, I like to embrace diversity, so I'm going to give the panel a choice. I want every member of the panel to answer one or two questions, oh. uh, 20 seconds or less, so a nice instinctive answer would be wonderful. Either if you had a magic wand, what would be the magical thing that you'd do with it? Or what's the best mistake you've made that you want to share that... Yeah, the myths or the, the things that people try where you're like, oh, I'm doing this in the aid of diversity and inclusion, and you completely screwed it up. So either magic wand or your best mistake. Steve. <laughs> if I had a magic wand, I would, ho I would wave it and hope that every leader out there would suddenly have the realisation that all they need to do is focus on their people, and creating an environment for their people to succeed. Because the blind spot we still have today from our industrial society, not to mention all the, the more contemporary issues of a diverse society, but as an industrial society, we think people are just these tools and machines and we don't really appeal to their heads and hearts the way we need to in the kind of economy that you guys and others are creating for the future. Beautiful. Thank you, Steve. Very concise. Are you happy with that for concise? Okay. Yes. Huss, over to you. If Steve, I had a magic Steve. wand, I would actually um, implement a policy where every large organisation implements some form of target where the makeup, the, the diverse makeup of their team is truly reflective of the community that we live in. I think that's, that's the key. The second one, mistakes I've made, probably um, unbiased conscience when I'm recruiting. Very early in the piece, I used to want to recruit people like me. And nobody wants 100 people like me. <laughs> and I think now I actually say, this person very much like me, but I actually want someone maybe yeah. different that's going to add more value. Yeah. Cool. I like the, not, the honesty there as well. Thank you. <laughs> have, have magic, you? magic wand, um, that if we could... It, all adults could retain the innocence they have as children. Yeah. Because no one's born a racist, no one's born a homophobe, no one's born an Islamophobe or a xenophobe. Um, it's something that we pick up, unfortunately, and is taught. And it's so much harder to, un, you know, unteach that, I suppose, as adults. So if only we could have that. Yeah. My have magic sex. wand would probably have people come to work and just play nice, mm -hmm. like the kids in the sandpit, like... Just play nice. Treat others, you know, as you'd like to be treated yourself, seriously. Although some people's measure of how they treat others yeah. perhaps is questionable. Um, in terms of uh, biggest mistake, um, when I stepped into the CEO role, I'd been with the organisation for 10 years, so I thought that I had a good view on what were the issues and what we needed to do to transform the place. And I asked my staff two questions. One, if I could keep one thing the same, what would it be? And two, if I could change, if I was to change one thing, what would it be? So I came up with my list and that was my mandate for change. So I was going to drive through the organisation, make everyone happy. And the reality was that you're never going to make everyone happy. Um, people resist change, even if they're the ones who chose it and asked for it. So when I swapped out the biscuit barrel for the fruit bowl, my goodness. <laughs> Was there an anarchy? It's like but we spoke about living, you know, healthier lives in the office. Um, yeah, that would be my... <laughs> Thanks, Fiona. Thank you. Um, very quickly on Magic Wand, I'd give four Magic Wands here because I think they were much better answers than anything that I could do. Um, but I've got lots of mistakes. Um, but to choose one, and, and actually listening to the panel today and what Steve was talking earlier about leadership and people managers uh, and what makes great leaders versus technocrats. I remember my first major project, I was a great technocrat, knew how to build, and I was given a big project to run as a leader. And my first response was, my job is now to do what everybody else is doing. I've got to do it better and deeper and longer. And I was working ridiculous hours. And it took an intervention from the team to come and say, Dale, we need you to be our leader, not to be doing what we're doing. We can do what you're doing. We can do it actually better because there's 35 of us. There's one of you. <laughs> and it took an intervention. And it took me to realise to the point of, oh, my job is to be a leader, is to be a people manager, is to care and work out how do I get these 35 people to work together as an ex a fun team. I didn't really think of inclusiveness in those days. Mm. But it was how do we get together and leverage everybody to be successful? Um, and sort of took an intervention to learn that. Yeah. I, was, I, was in my, I was in my office furiously working away and there was a knock on the door and they, they all were. Oh. Yeah. Anarchy. So it was, I thought it was anarchy. Yeah. They'd been planning this for a while. Weren't you lucky that you had such great staff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's really cool. That's